So we're here in uh, my faculty in Ferry, uh, Maribor, Slovenia, uh, to, to discuss some problems with Ivan and, yeah, to have fun. <laughs> I want to show you a really cool trick which involves trees. So trees are like graphs which do not have cycles, right? So, um, okay, let, let's, let's draw a tree, right? All right. Now what I want you to do is tell me some numbers uh, so I can fill up the notes with some okay, numbers. All right, six. Six. Ten. Ten. I don't know, maybe eight. Eight. Two. Two. Nine. Oh, nice. Uh, okay, so we have this tree, right? Each node has some value, right? And uh, first we have to define what is a subtree. So a subtree is just this, uh, let, let's say this, this is a subtree, right? So this here is a tree inside the whole tree, right? With uh, 10 being as the root node, okay? What I want you to, to, to first to do uh, is uh, tell me the sum in this, in, in some, some subtree, let's say in this subtree. So the sum in this subtree is 16, right? Okay. Uh, so I will ask you like multi multiple questions of this in different subtrees. And you can calculate the sum just by doing this, like going into that subtree and, uh, and summing up all the numbers. So have you, uh, have you got any idea how we can speed that up? Right. Remember the sum in the root of this subtree. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so what we can do is, for each subtree, we know that there is only one unique sum, right? And we can remember that in in every node, right? What is the sum of that of, of the subtree which in uh, which that node is the root, right? So in here in ten, what we can do is we have uh, another information is the sum that in this subtree that is sixteen. In each of these, that would be sum of two, right? Sum of four, right? Here, sum of two, sum of four. Here, there will be six, five, nine. And here, there will be six plus five, which is 11, plus nine, 20, 20 28, if I'm correct, will be the sum of this subtree here, right? So the sum of the whole subtree will be 16 plus 28, plus this here, six uh, on top of that. Right. So what is that? Uh, that's what? Uh, that's tw uh, 24. Uh, was that tw 22 plus 28? That's 50, right? Okay, 50 is the sum of the whole tree, of the whole tree, right? And then you can query this. So we have a query, uh, query of all of one time, right? But now the problem becomes a little bit harder, right? Uh, what if you want to change a number? So what if you want to update a node? So what happens then? If you change, like, let's say this, uh, you change this uh, four, let's say. Let's say you change this four to, uh, I will change this to eight, okay? Now this sum becomes 20 and this sum becomes 54. So you have this propagation, which we're doing, right? It, you change this, and now this sum changes, and this sum changes, right? So you, you, in the worst case scenario, if you have a tree like this, where you change this bottom node, you will have all of these subtree sums will change, right? Now, to, uh, this will be update of n because at most n nodes can change with one update, right? Now we want uh, to do something better, something that is way faster on the query and the update side. So to, uh, to approach this uh, problem, uh, we're going to use a technique, uh, and this is the, the trickery here, uh, right? So we're going to use a technique called tree linearization. So this is a very hard word to pronounce <laughs> for me, uh, at least. Um, so you, you have this nonlinear structure, right? A tree is a nonlinear structure. And now you want to linearize it. So like to have a, 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 an array of numbers, which I, can, which I can compute the sums very quickly with other data structures, right? 
So I will just skip this aside and I will redraw the, the, the same tree. I will redraw the same tree, right? So now what, what I want you to, to, a very interesting idea is what we got, is we're going to go, we're going to traverse the tree using DFS, but uh, each time we enter a node, we're going to click on the stopwatch. And each okay. time we exit a node, we're going to click on the stopwatch again. Okay. So we actually call this a timer, but let's have a stopwatch. And we enter this node and we click on the stopwatch and we say one, right? We enter this node in the DFS, we click on the stopwatch and we say two. We enter this node on the DFS, we click on the stopwatch and we say three. Now we don't have anything to go here, right? Now we need to exit this node, right? So we say this is four. We exit, we click on the stopwatch and we, we, we exit the node, four, right? Now we go to this node, we enter it, five, right? Now we exit it, six. And, and you see how now we've come to this node and now the, all, all of a sudden the, the, out, the out, the timer out, the stopwatch on the output is now seven. So you can see some kind of a resemblance what, what, what will happen here, right? Here we will enter this node with eight, this node nine, exit 10, enter here 11, exit 12, right? Enter here, 13, exit 14, and exit 15. Exit this node, exit this node with 16. Now you see how this structure, this seemingly un, un, non-linear structure, now we have some numbers to work with, right? Each of these numbers will represent ends of, the in, of some interval. And let me show you how we can do this, okay? Let's write down all of the numbers from 1 to 60. Okay, let, we don't have space for this here. Let me write down here. Paper change. Let me, paper change. <laughs> uh, whoops, again, there's no... <laughs> this gotta be... Very interesting, okay. I, I've managed somehow, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so now we can take a look into the intervals and let us denote each interval with, with, with some line, right? Now, from one to 16, we have our whole interval. That's the whole tree. We have from two to seven, we have another interval. And here from eight to 15, here from eight to 15, we have another interval, right? Uh, now I'm just going to draw from three to four to five, five to six intervals, right? Now we have from nine, uh, from nine to 10, 11, 12. Now you see this resemblance that the whole, that these nodes here have their own interval with like two numbers in it. And a whole subtree, which is this subtree, now has this big interval from two to seven. So what we do is we write down the numbers. The, the, what we do is we write down the numbers inside of these nodes, right? Now, now here you can see that three and four are, are one node, so we can compress them. But, but what I, I will do is I will just write on the three, I will just write two, right, here. And on the four, I will write zero doesn't really matter for, right? So uh, here I will write uh, four, zero, right? Now for this whole subtree here, I will write 10 on the two, on the, on the interval two, and on the seven I will write zero again, right? So these are like this. Maybe it's better to see how, okay, now we have, now, now we, we can go to the, to this subtree, right, to, we calculate this uh, as like nine, nine, nine and ten, this interval has the note, has six, value six, and the other note is zero, this is five and zero, and this is nine and uh, 
zero, and this whole subtree here has like this, I think, I mean, eight has this, then there's zero, and this is six and zero for the whole tree, right? The root node of the tree is six, right? And at the end of it is zero, right? Now, what we've done is we had this nonlinear structure. We, we, trans, we, we transformed that to a linear structure. And now what we can do is, is take some other data structure, let's say segment tree, which is very powerful data structure, right? To query on these segments. So if you want to query, let's say, the sum of this of one of these subtree, what you do is you query the sum on the segment in this array here. So if I want the sum from, let's say, from uh, from this subtree, which is here, our initial subtree, right, of 10 plus 2 plus 4, right, the 16 subtree, right, uh, the, the sum was 16, uh, you can see that this uh, subtree is exactly on this interval and the sum is 16. 10 plus 2 plus 4, which is 16, right? The other zeros don't really count in this case, right? And not only that we can query in logarithmic time, we can also update in logarithmic time. So this is very important for our case. Not There's no uh, end time. There, there's no linear time. There's only, so a query um, is of log of n and update is also of log of n because we in the segment tree when we have this we can we, we can find this structure we can find these uh, sums in a logarithmic time or update any of the nodes in logarithmic time so a very interesting problem and very interesting solution that we, we have to this. We, ha we, we can find this. Uh, th this is very interesting. Like, uh, do, do this nonlinear non structure, you get it to a linear structure, and then you, you, do another, you, you create another tree on top of it, right? And then you, you query on that tree, which is very cool. So I think I think this this require this is actually very very cool and 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 most importantly, this thing is used in uh, LCA. So in the LCA algorithm to check ancestors, this is uh, this is actually used there. So like uh, if you want to to check uh, if some uh, some uh, node is ancestor of another, uh, this is very useful because we can quickly see in uh, what uh, are they in the same interval like if if this uh, node has that interval right if we know that this 10 here if uh, let's say this 10 here is inside this interval which we we know we already calculated 2 2 and 7 right we know that this 16 in the, uh, this node with like six in it, like that's the root node, it's from one to 16. This interval is completely inside of this interval, which means that this interval is, uh, is a child. There, there is a child node, uh, like in a, uh, it's a child node, right? Um, yeah, this is used in LCA uh, to compute this, uh, to, to check if it's an ancestor of another node. And that, yeah, that, that's a pretty cool trick. Is nice, that like, nice. yeah, nice. you have this kind of structure and then you convert it and then you use other data structures on top of it. I, I'm, I'm just like wondering how, like, how can be, how this can be done, like even like more complex, more complex problems or like. So uh, instead of using linear time, you actually Yeah, yeah, you, you use logarithmic time, time using this, down. like this powerful transformation, which is not, which not that obvious at first, right? It's right, not, yeah. it's not obvious that, that, sure. that this works actually, right? Mm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know. Nice. <laughs>